Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we are going to be learning about the fairly new selection brush tool, which works very similar to the other selection tools in Photoshop. We will be using these three images here. You can download these images. The link is given in the description of the video. The first image here will help us just to understand some of the basics of this tool. And the second and third will be very important because these are the images on which we'll do something in such a way that the other selection tools cannot. So we'll kind of start to understand why this tool is a bit unique. But let's start with the first image just to understand some of the basics. So if you look at this tool, this is actually in that menu which had the lasso tool, right? And there's a good reason for that because it works very similar to the lasso tool. So let's right now not select the selection brush tool. Let me just select this because this everyone knows that you just use the lasso tool like this. That means if I have to make any sort of a selection, I just manually draw it with my mouse. And the moment I finish the selection, we get the marching ants and anything that I do to this image now will mainly affect this selection. So let me hit Control Command D to deselect it. If we go back, this time select the selection brush tool. The main difference is that instead of drawing those lines which turn into the marching ants denoting the selection, we simply paint. So it's like a paintbrush. And this is something that is not at all new when it comes to the Adobe ecosystem because this way of making selection has already existed in Lightroom and also in Camera Raw within Photoshop. It's just that there it's called as the masking feature. But just see this, now that I've painted this, I can actually turn this into one of those marching ants like selections if I hit the V key on the keyboard. So if I do that, you're gonna see that it actually turns into that. If I want again to go back to that overlay mode, I can hit the shortcut key for this tool, which is L. So if I do that, it just changes it back to that. Another thing, suppose I've painted this, anytime I now switch over to another tool, so for example, I switch over to the lasso tool, which is, let's call it the marching ants tool, just like the other ones. Well, you get that marching ants look. If I go back to here, it goes back, not just within this menu. Let's say right now selection brush is enabled, so we are seeing what we painted, but I go to the quick select tool, for example, quick selection tool. It just turns into that. Go back here, it turns into that. Also, it behaves in a very similar way as to how the other tools work with each other. That means if I have created this, in fact, let's hit Control Command D to deselect this. Let's start with some other tool. For example, let's go on to the quick selection tool and I just select this. And let's say for some reason, I just wanna add a bit to the selection, but I wanna do it from this tool. Then it just works like any other tool. I select this tool. First of all, you can see it turns into that overlay. And now I have the add and subtract modes, just like with the other selection tool. So with add, which is usually by default, if I paint, it's gonna add to whatever the selection I had made with the quick selection tool. If I choose subtract, I can remove from the selection. The shortcuts for this, for adding is you can hold down shift key and for subtracting is the usual alt and option. So again, everything remains the same. There's one thing here. So what you're seeing right now is the properties of this tool. And you can see we've got the opacity control also. This is gonna be important when we talk about the second and third images where I told you that this tool is capable of doing something unique which the other selection tools cannot do. So. We'll talk about this later. Then because this is a brush, we also get the brush properties, which are like the size. So we can change the size. You can also do this by the square bracket keys. Not here, one second. So I just close this. Well, I just messed things a bit there, but yeah, now we're back. So if I just hold down the square bracket keys, I can increase or decrease the size here. And we can also change the hardness of the edges. So if I want the edges to be soft, go here, if I want it to be defined, I can go this side. So just like a normal brush. Finally, we have this gear looking uh, icon here and we can use this to change the overlay color. So right now by default it's set to magenta, but I can also change it, let's say to green. And then it's gonna start uh, painting green. Okay, so this can be important if the colors in your subject are conflicting. So you can see, right, it's pretty similar. now. One of the areas where this tool works really well is when you use it in conjunction with Generative Fill. So let's open up the contextual taskbar here so that we can access Generative Fill. 
And it's not like it's going to do something which you can't do with Lasso or Quick Select or the other selection tools. It's just that I find beginners might find this more intuitive and more fun. Because let's say if I want to remove these four paintings, then all I have to do is, let's say just increase my brush size, make a stroke like this, stroke like this. I'm just going to cover that. So how easy was that? Like just with four strokes, I've got the selection. And remember, when you want to remove something using generative fill, all I need to do is I don't even need to write the prompt. Just hit generate. And let's just wait for the results here. All right, so let's see the result here. And you can see with literally just four strokes and hitting one button, we've been able to get rid of those paintings. But of course, that's nothing that the other tools can't do. For example, I can take the lasso tool and do the same thing, right? Make this selection. Hold down shift to add and make this selection and so on, so on, and then use generative fill. So this is nothing new. Probably we can say that it's slightly more convenient, okay? But now let's go on to the second image to start to see things which only this tool can do as opposed to the other ones that we have been seeing. So let's go back to our selection brush tool. And let me just change the color back to magenta, though that's not necessary. So let's stick to the defaults. Now remember I talked about the opacity slider. This is gonna come into play, but let's look at the problem here. So let's say that I've got this image and what I wanna do is that I wanna make a subject selection and then I want to turn this into an oil painting. So let's see how this will work. So we can use one of the AI selection tools, which is in this menu. So we can go to select, select subject. And first of all, before we do that, we'll also just see via this example that this tool can also be easier to modify certain selections like this. For example, right now, since this tool is selected, it's showing us the overlay. But usually, if, let's say the lasso tool was selected, it was gonna show us the marching end. So I hope that that is clear by now. But when you're looking, usually this is the case, right? When this tool was not available, we would mainly see when we hit select subject, we would see this marching end selection. And when you look at it like this, it's very easy to miss out the areas which have been selected or the wrong areas. Um, and you know, any problems with this selection. Now again, this is what I'm gonna show you now is again not something totally new because whatever I'm gonna show you can also be done by using this quick mask mode, which is very similar to actually how the selection brush works. That means on the quick mask mode, I can also modify my selections with the help of a paint brush. But right now I don't wanna get into that. And the reason for that is a lot of beginners might not be comfortable or they might not even know about the quick mask mode. So that can confuse them if I start talking about it right now. I'll probably do another video on quick mask versus the selection brush tool because they work in a very, very similar way. In fact, the quick mask has been there forever in Photoshop. So a lot of criticism that this tool is getting is that this was basically already there in the form of quick mask. But like I said, I don't want to get into that discussion right now, probably a separate video for that. So we'll just ignore the quick, the talk about quick mask. Okay. But just thought I'll mention that because a lot of people who do know about it might, especially in this part now, might begin to ask that question. But anyway, we've got this selection here. And if we go through this selection, this is not a perfect selection, but it's tough to notice it like this. But the moment I switch over, to the selection brush tool and I see this overlay, I can clearly see even without zooming in that his this part of his socks and the shoes have not been selected because this is not a part of the overlay, just easier for the eye to notice it. So what I can do is just take the zoom tool, go back to this, decrease my brush size and now it's very easy, right? I can simply paint this, okay? Similarly, if we go right here, and you see that this part of the helmet is not being selected. And this, adding this to the selection can even be tough with, uh, for example, the quick selection tool, because you can see here the contrast between the, uh, the helmet and the background is very less, right? So in this case, is, earlier on, you would have to probably use the lasso tool, right? And that's slightly tough to draw. But when you have a brush, it's just easier to draw like this. Right now, I'm using a mouse, actually. But especially if you're using a tab, and you know, the pen makes it really, really easy. Now I've crossed a bit, so I can always hit Alt Option, go to the minus mode or the subtract mode and just correct this, right? So it's very easy in a way to modify the selections. But again, this is still something that can easily be done using the other tools. But now it's time to see something different, okay? So I've got my contextual text bar open here. And what we're gonna do is, let's just give it a prompt. So this is a selection, right? Now let's just say, we type in turn into, or let's just type, oil painting, okay? Don't have to write the whole thing. And hopefully, 
we are assuming that generator fill will be intelligent enough to turn this into an oil painting, but there's gonna be one problem as you're gonna notice, because what we did here, if you think of it, is a full-fledged selection, right? So just see, when you give it a proper selection, the normal selection that we're used to, one of the criticisms generator fill gets is that it takes too much liberty to do anything that, he that it wants with the selection. So I just said oil painting, but there I'm assuming that yes, keep the main subject, retain its important features and then turn it into an oil painting. But here, only the form of the subject has been maintained, but if you see the original, it's nowhere near, right? The jersey is different, everything is different. It's basically a new person or a new painting form altogether. If you even see the second version here, that's completely looks like more like someone who probably would be riding a bike and uh, something like this. It's totally different, right? So what we're going to do is let's delete this. Now, this is where this tool can be really, really handy because of the opacity slider. So when I'm using this tool, what I can do is I can make a different kind of a selection by decreasing the opacity first. So let's say I turn down the opacity to something like 40% and then I start to draw just a very rough selection around this subject, okay? So just see, I don't even have to be precise. But basically, it's tough to even see that overlay, right? Because we are working with a reduced opacity. Now, one very important thing, don't leave your mouse click when you're doing this because how opacity works is that if I make a second stroke now, so now I've left my mouse, but if I was to paint again, this actually is 40%. So each stroke would, uh, sorry, uh, this would be 80%. Okay, so the original one stroke was 40%. Till the time you don't leave your mouse, it's okay. You can continue painting, it just remains at 40%. But the moment I left my mouse click and clicked again, it's gonna add and make it double. So this is 80%, so I'm just gonna undo it because we need this to be subtle. This kind of a selection is referred to as a soft mask or also called as a soft selection. Because if you try to think of it, this is not a full selection. And how can we verify this? Not only by looking at the you know, the overlay, because it doesn't look as strong as before, but we can actually verify this by opening up a layer mask. So if I open up a layer mask here, and what you're seeing here is, just select the layer mask, can you see, usually in a layer mask, what do you see when you make a selection? The selected part is white, right? But in this case, you can see that it's a shade of gray. And this is the kind of shade which just means, because our opacity was 40%, it's as good as saying that you took a brush, which is, 40% white and 60% black. That kind of mixture is forming this particular soft mask or a soft selection. And the advantage of such a selection is that it's gonna basically, so let me just delete this layer mask. Whenever you use some feature on it, like generator fill, it's basically gonna work on it in a very subtle way because think of it like this, these soft selections or the soft mask, it just blends things very well. Okay, it doesn't really do too much damage because simply the original selection is not at its full intensity. So let's just get back to our selection. So this was the overlay that we made. And now if we go to generate a fill and we type in oil painting, and this time let's wait for the results. All right, so this time you can see that our results are much more closer to the original subject. So if I hide this, you can see, Yes, the face is a bit messed up, that's okay, because we can always, remember, generate a fill whenever you use it, it comes with a layer mask, so I can always go to my normal brush, and we can just hide the face. So if I paint with black on the face, that's just gonna start to at least reveal the subject like this. So at least I wanted the face to be original, but if you look at his body, that's pretty much turned into an oil painting. Let's say even if for the face, maybe, let me just go down to something like, Decrease the opacity. At least I want a bit of the face to be, uh, you know, recognizable. But now if you see and compare it with the original, yeah, it definitely looks like an oil painting. And if I was to go here, look at the three variations also, you can see, right? It's even the jersey, the number is not being changed and the other things are remaining intact. So that's because we used a soft selection. Let's also look at another usage of this. So if I go right here, let's go back to our selection brush. When you're working on blemishes on the face, right? Issues like this, you really have to be as subtle as possible because if you use generative fill to remove this, it can completely change the structure of the face or add some things that you didn't want if you're using a full selection. But just right now, remember it was set to 40%. Also, since I'm working on a very sensitive area like a face, I really want things to be very subtle. I can also go a step further. And remember, we have the control over the hardness of the edge also. So not 
So I can also just turn this down so even the edges will be very soft and at 40% this is going to be really smooth. So just draw this, you can barely see it but you can see we have covered most of the area and we're going to do the same thing. One thing that I just want to point out is that don't even go too low like 10% or something then it's you know, really not going to produce any change. Think of it like this, there wasn't enough of a selection there, okay? But now if I go to generative fill, I hit generate and let's wait for the results. All right, so let's wait for the results and you can see it literally just only removed those things, right? There was no other difference, which is unlike generative fill in a lot of cases. But here, we use the soft selection so it worked. Let's look at the three variations. Here, maybe there was a bit of a difference, just a bit, but that's still acceptable, and even this one. But I think the first one was pretty much perfect. So you can see, yes, not a groundbreaking tool. It's not something that you couldn't do in Photoshop because whatever we even did with the second and third images, like I mentioned before, could be done if you knew about the Quick Mask tool. Like I said, I'll probably make another video on it, but you can still see if you're a complete beginner and you're learning about selections, this definitely is very intuitive and makes it easier for beginners to understand. If you're someone who still gets confused by things like layer masking and everything else in Photoshop, how do layers work? I've got a basics of Photoshop which is com course which is completely free. It has 20 videos and they just help you understand all the basics that you need to know before you can use these advanced tools. So do check that course out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out and see you next time.